Hi, I'm Blair Murphy, Curator of Exhibitions at Arlington Arts Center, and I'm happy to be back with another episode of AAC Off the Wall, our new series featuring conversations with AAC's resident artists. While AAC is closed to the public, our staff and instructors are creating online programs to continue connecting our audience to contemporary art and contemporary artists. Go to our website, arlingtonartcenter.org, to see all of our online programs, including conversations with artists, art projects to do at home, and online classes for kids and adults. If you haven't already, join our email list to receive our weekly newsletter to get the latest updates about all of these new programs. In this episode of Off the Wall, I talk with Jen Noon, who has been a long-term resident of AAC since 2018. Jen received her BA in Art Education from St. Joseph's University in Philadelphia and her MFA in Studio Art from American University in DC. Jen's work has been exhibited locally and nationally, including at Tyrrell Gallery in Baltimore, Projecta Projects in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, like Brooklyn in Brooklyn, Connor Smith in DC, and the American University Museum at the Katzen Art Center. Although her previous work was primarily sculpture, Jen's creating a new body of work that channels her interest in materials and material exploration into two dimensions. This new series builds on her previous work, which you might have seen in sort of, kind of, almost, her solo show in AAC's Wyatt Gallery in the summer of 2019. I really enjoyed our conversation and hearing about Jen's new work. I hope you enjoy it as well, and thanks for watching. Hi, Jen, how are you? Hey Blair, I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good. Thanks for talking this morning. I really appreciate it. I'm looking forward to hearing about the new work. You're welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to talk as well. So you've been working on some new pieces in the studio lately, I think over the last couple months. Um, can you tell us a little bit about those? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I've been working on this um, new body of work over the past few months and I'm really excited about it. Um, the piece that you see on the screen is one of these two-dimensional works that I've been working through. Um, and I'll just flip through a couple of them so you guys can get a feel for them. They're pieces of glass where I've coated the back with latex. Mm -hmm. um, and then I go through this process of scraping and painting um, on the back side of the glass so that uh, the re reverse image shows through the other side of the glass. Um, and I'm really excited about them. They're different from the work that I've been doing in the past, which, which has been more sculptural, um, mm. so working with this uh, wall work um, that's specifically two-dimensional. Um, but it's similar in that I'm exploring material. Um, I have this fascination with taking materials and pushing them um, to different places, new places. So here I'm working with latex and glass, um, experiment, experimenting with the possibilities. Mm -hmm. And like you said, these are a little different from the work you were doing maybe last year because they are two dimensional or they are at least um, in some ways you're building them up, up sculpturally, but then they're meant to be presented on the wall. Um, but it's, you're, you're sort of expanding on what you were doing before as far as the latex and the other material. Um, kind of building off of some of the pieces that were in solo exhibition you had at AAC last year. Um, I think you have a few images of those. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I had the opportunity to have the, the solo show at Arlington Art Center, sort of kind of almost, where yes, I was using latex paint coating glass surfaces. Um, you see the glass boxes that I have on the screen now um, and scraping and then painting and scraping and building up layers of paint um, that looks visually different from the work that I'm doing now, but it's a very similar process, uh, this repetitive process of painting and scraping and painting and scraping. Um, I can flip through. So some of the work um, was meant to hang on the wall, but it was more three-dimensional. It was trying to come off of the wall um, I allowed the paint to rip into these sculptural ribbons. Um, I'll flip through and show you guys some other examples. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we can kind of see two of these that the the inside kind of had a different feeling than the outside because it had like almost the the layers that you were building up were visible. Uh, yeah, so the, working with the glass allowed, yeah, allowed you to experience that process um, in a visually different way from 
what you were saying on the outside, mm -hmm. which I really liked. Um, here's one of the smaller pieces. So I think this was one of the last pieces I made for that show and helped me get into this current body of work because I was ripping the paint, the red paint mm -hmm. off of the glass and allowing um, the paint on the other side of the glass, that pink paint to show through um, mm -hmm. and be visible. Mm -hmm. And the paint you're working with is, like you mentioned, it's latex paint. So basically just house paint, like from somebody might buy at Home Depot to, to paint their living room. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Um, throughout my art career, I've been interested in um, materials that are often used as surface treatments. I've worked a lot with makeup um, and with clothing. And so now my new uh, obsession is latex paint. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just the, the discounted paint at Home Depot um, that you would use to paint, repaint your walls in your house. Um, mm -hmm. And every now and then I'll introduce um, uh, acrylic paint or acrylic ink, something that I think is really visually interesting to, to kind of beautify these um, unwanted colors that people return to Home Depot. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, I kind of am interested in that is like the, the connection that in addition to the fact that you're always using or often using sort of non-traditional fine art materials, but that they're all things that are in some ways meant to beautify things in sort of other spheres of life. So whether it's house paint or beauty products or like things that are meant to kind of, are, are like from some other aesthetic realm, being like the other connection. I think yeah, it has an interesting relationship with um, beauty. Um, I love beautiful things, you know, I hang beautiful things on my wall at home. I like to, to dress up. Um, and it's, it's been this weird relationship through my life where there was a, a point where I, like, I disregarded that. Um, I dress in ripped jeans in high school, you know, and, and tried to push that away um, and didn't quite know why then. And reflecting on it, um, I don't know, I, I think I felt like there was a disconnect. Somebody couldn't be taken seriously if... Um, if they were engaged in this, this beauty culture, um, I guess that was ingrained in me from um, the, the greater culture mm -hmm. that was influencing me. Um, but yeah, then once I got into grad school, um, I started questioning that why, why was this something that I, I pushed away for so long when it's something, I, I love beautiful things. Um, mm -hmm. So I started investigating beauty products, um, I just go into CVS um, or into the, the mall and just start buying things that I thought were visually beautiful, clothing, and started incorporating that into my art practice to try to figure out what that relationship was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is there's sort of a, that I don't know, that broader sense in which things that are like attractive or beautiful are sort of suspect or thought as like not serious also kind of has its own um, has had its own impact in art history and art criticism too, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I talked recently with Olivia for the same series of videos. Olivia Dripmora, who's also a resident at AC, and we talked about that history of um, like feminist art in the 60s and 70s and artists who started working with craft and how one of the critiques that was often made of their work or one of the words that was used to kind of diminish it was to refer to it as decorative. Mm -hmm. But like if it was too decorative, it was sort of unserious because it wasn't fulfilling it was sort of interested in decoration and attractiveness and beauty and not the kind of serious high art things that like conceptualism was dealing with mm -hmm. um so it's interesting to think of that as like a broader conversation about how things are aren't taken seriously but also with a really specific art historical or like yeah a way in which that's like been part of um art criticism also Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so I, I, sorry. Oh, <laughs> I was just going to say, you are there, I think, um, with some work in the studio. Do you also want to um, show us a little, show us some of the pieces in the space and maybe um, talk a little bit about your process of working with the, the latex paint? Yeah, sure. Um, so I have a piece here um, that's very new. Um, where I'm taking that sheet of glass that I talked about and I've coated the backside um, with latex paint. 
Um, the next step will be to scrape this off and then I'll repaint it with a different color but allow the, the scrapings to build up. Um, and I continue that process. I have another example. Um, so this is the back side. Mm -hmm. And this is the front. Right. So I'll continue to scrape and paint and scrape and paint, picking new colors. Um, and I want it to get to a point where it feels really worked. Um, mm -hmm. um, I think about it uh, as scars, like I want those scars to be visible, those rips, those tears. Mm -hmm. um, and it's this constant effort to, to repaint, to try to make it better, to, to try to get it um, to be more worked over. Mm -hmm. um, once I get to that point, uh, I'll go get a, another example. Okay. Can you see that? Yeah. yeah that's great. Um, so once I get it to a point where I feel like what you see under the glass um, feels really worked, uh, that's what it looks like on the back. Mm -hmm. I'll take um, a mixture of clear latex and iridescent craft paint and I'll coat the entire surface of the glass, let it dry, and then I'll cut through um, to reveal um, negative spaces underneath so that you can see what's, what's going on on the other side mm -hmm. of the glass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's this nice tension between the what you're developing with the paint on the back, which kind of it sounds, I mean, you, you're very methodical about it, but the, the compositions and the buildup kind of winds up feeling more chaotic. And then this like structure on the front, which is like, yeah. yeah, this, the, this process is pretty intuitive. It's, it's very, intuitive. I don't plan it. I come in every day, pick a color, whatever color I'm, I'm feeling like that day, paint it, scrape it. Um, and then you're right. Yeah, this is very planned out. Um, so my reference for the negative spaces um, are athleisure wear, mm -hmm. um, sports bras uh, are becoming very decorative and have these really interesting patterns cut out of them that reveal the skin underneath and I found them fascinating um, for the past year and have been trying to figure out a way to incorporate it into my work um, and finally found a way that mm -hmm. I hope is successful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the tension between that like structure and the background is really nice. And the sense that it's the structure on the front is like containing whatever's going on behind mm -hmm. really comes through. Um, and I think the, the, when I first saw them, the structures that you've picked, picked out, like the designs on the front feel familiar, but it's hard to place, mm -hmm. which is just kind of an interesting like way of using that because it is like this weird way in which there's, there is this trend in that kind of women's sportswear where it's become even sports bras, which are very functional, have become kind of decorative. <laughs> like, yeah. use that word again. Um, but it's a, uh, an interesting, like, reference. But then also connects to, like, stained glass and has, like, an architectural feel, which um, is also, I think, partly coming from the, the fact that it's on glass. And so it has this feeling of, like, a window. Yeah, I think that's what made me make those connections. So I've been interested collecting these images of these different um, sports bras, um, and they reminded me of stained glass when I first saw them. Um, but like I said, couldn't figure out how to incorporate them into my work. And then I was making um, these scrape paintings for the past year without knowing how to resolve them. And then one day it just clicked. Um, and I combine them. I also like, um, it's like I, I go shopping visually online for the, the references and try to pair them with whatever shape and size the glass it's going on to, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, so this is kind of a shorter, wider piece of glass, not tall and long like some of the other ones. Mm -hmm. So I felt like this pattern or this design would um, accentuate the shape of the glass um, more than another design, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can show you guys um, another one. Do you want to see? Sure. Yeah, yeah, maybe the, the one you were putting at. Okay. 
So this was one of the very first um, scrape paintings that I made after my solo show mm -hmm. last year. I wanted to, to keep the momentum going with um, the glass and latex, but wanted to experiment with a different way of um, showing that visually. Um, so this is one of the first ones that I made. It has a special place in my heart. <laughs> um, but you can see it took a while to, to figure it out. I don't know if you can see how textured the back is mm -hmm. um, over the screen, but it, it's really worked up, um, really textural um, mm -hmm. versus the flat surface. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that sense of containment really comes through that like this like exterior structure sort of holding holding something in. Um, and it's interesting that you were talking before about your interest in beauty and there's always this weird line between like the beautiful and the grotesque and I, I think those these pieces have an element of that that tension um, yeah absolutely yeah um and that's where it's more intuitive trying to get that balance as i'm adding paint adding color um to take this um and try and create that balance of the grotesque versus the beauty. Mm -hmm. Well, it's really exciting to see the new work done. Um, really excited to someday see these in person because the, the textures look really amazing. Um, and it's sometimes hard with work like this, I think is, I, I can tell that there's like, there's, they look great in this context, but I can also tell there's a lot going on that I probably can't quite, like the computer screen doesn't quite communicate. <laughs> so um, I just can't, you know, it's, um, yeah, very excited to see them in person, I guess. Me too. I'm excited to share them with you. <laughs> but thank you for letting me share them yeah. virtually for now. <laughs> yeah, thanks for talking this morning, and um, thanks everybody out there for watching. Um, please keep an eye on our website. We do have more online programming coming up, and then um, once we are able to reopen to the public, um, please come and see us and come see the open studios with our residents. Mm -hmm. Hope everyone is staying safe and healthy. We will see you again soon. Bye, Jen. Bye, Blair.